Knitty and Possibilities podcast. I'm Nikki and this is a podcast all about knitting, crochet and making all the things here in Northwest London. You can find me on Instagram at hippie underscore Nikki, although I'm not posting at the moment. Um, I took a break from Instagram during the second lockdown and I haven't really gone back and I think I'll probably stay off until after Christmas at least. Um, but if you do want to follow me there, I will be back at some point. <laughs> I will link to that and everything else I mention in this episode just down below in the description box and where possible I will be posting Ravelry and non-Ravelry links for people for whom Ravelry is still not a safe space. As always I am kicking off the podcast with a big thank you. If you are a new viewer thank you so much for giving the podcast a shot, I really do appreciate it and if you are a returning viewer thank you so much for coming back every episode. I always forget to mention this, so I have put it as a recurring note in my show notes, but I do have a Ko-fi account which is also linked just down below if you would like to buy me a coffee for this episode, or any episode really. Um, I always forget to mention it, so just down there with everything else. And just to say to everybody who donated after the last episode, thank you, I really do appreciate it. Today's tea is from my tea advent calendar. A friend of mine sent me the um, Pucker tea advent calendar and it came in a nice thin little box that when you opened it, it rolled down and is currently hanging up in my kitchen and smells wonderful. Um, And this is a ginger tea. I've actually got the, um, I always keep the little uh, packet to show you. This is three ginger, so there you go. Um, And it is a warming swirl of ginger, Galangal and um, golden turmeric. I don't know if I pronounced that second word correctly, <laughs> but it's uh, it's three ginger, so it's three kinds of ginger. And um, I'm not feeling 100% today. It is gloomy and um, it is um, a Sunday. Is it Sunday? Yes, it's Sunday. And I very rarely record on Sundays because then it's a bit of a rush to record, edit, upload and do all of that. So, um, this week the captioning might be a little late. Um, but it's just, it's been a bit of a time. We'll, we'll get there. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm in need of some really soothing ginger tea and this, This tastes like the best gingerbread. It's really good. (laughs) Isn't that funny how um, obviously it's warming because it's a hot drink, but um, because it's ginger, ginger is such a warming spice as well. So there's just this extra layer of comfort, which is really lovely. So yeah, it's a bit of a strange one this week because I completely forgot to film last week. It has been a bit of a time, um, generally. I'm saying that every episode, but it has it has been a bit of a time. Um, our ceiling fell down. Um, our washing machine broke down. I forgot to podcast. And then I got to this weekend and decided um, that I was going to have a really big uh, life admin catch up this weekend because I had Friday off. And I did get most of that all done, um, but I popped out yesterday, which meant that I missed the last Christmas present I'm waiting on arriving. So I've got to go and pick that up after I filmed, come back home, wrap it up, parcel it up, (laughs) um, because it's part of a larger gift um, that I will be posting out also today if I can get out before the post office closes. So yeah. (laughs) to say it's been a little fraught uh would be an understatement uh but yes our ceiling fell down it's everyone is fine it fell down at like one o'clock in the morning we didn't even know that that was what the bang was until the next morning so yeah there was just a leak so we're just waiting to get that fixed and then of course the washing machine broke down and it's um it's all (laughs) go. It's all go. It's all go here. However, missing last week's episode um, means that there is more to show you this week. And that can only be a good thing. So let's move on to Whipped Up. So this week on Whipped Up, I say there's more to show you. There is and there isn't. I'm still feeling very monogamous. I think there is still, um, throughout the world we're still very much under it, we're still feeling all very depleted. We're coming to the end of a very, very long and very trying year. So I kind of feel like most of my friends, if they have mojo, it's monogamojo. 
Um, and I'm really feeling that monogamojo at the moment. Um, I think I've just, have I just made that up? I feel like someone's already come up with that. Um, what is it Elizabeth Zimmerman calls it? Unventing, when you come up with something somebody else already has. Um, but yes, so I do have some good things to show you. Not tons, because I am tending to work on things quite monogamously, but uh, we'll come to that. But the first thing is a foe. And what a foe it is. Um, this is the superhero blanket, um, which I found on the Lion Brand, um, not on the Lion Bla Brand, Bland? Not on the Lion Brand website, but I found it on the Joanne's website. So thank you to the lovely um, commenter last episode, I was gonna say last week, because I always do that, um, who said to Google Captain America shield blanket because I did, as, as you can see. Um, and I knit this out of paint box yarns in rose red, paper white, and sailor blue. And I used one ball of the blue and about a ball and a half of the red and white, which I think is, is pretty good going. Um, probably more, actually, of the white. I can't remember now. But not all six is what I'm saying. So I donated those to my friend who is getting really into crochet. So that's for her stash. Um, so yeah, I'm super duper happy with this. For those of you who don't remember, I bought all of the yarns to make a doggy blanket because my friend got a dog, uh, a tiny little French bulldog who has quite a lot of Marvel accessories and requested a Captain America blanket. Um, now, when I first looked at the pattern, I thought that you crocheted the star and then kind of turned it into a circle with the blue. I thought this was all in one. It's not. It's, um, there you go, it's probably better if I turn it around and show you. It's a solid circular blanket. I say circular, it's also not that. It's, I want to say it's octagonal. Hang on, let's count. Ten. It's tentagonal. I don't know what the ten-sided one is. Wow, I always said I wasn't good at maths. Maths is not my strong point. Um, we're going to call it tentagonal, okay? Cool. Please correct me in the comments because I know there is a word for that and my computer's just that bit too far away to Google it. So save me from myself, please. Um, but yeah, so it's just a kind of flat blanket and then you crochet the star and sew it on as you can see I have done here. Which I was worried would make it super thick and chunky because this isn't Aran weight. Um, but no, it's still very drapey, very wrappable. Um, he's only a tiny dog, so it's gonna be fine. I will say I did not follow the star pattern. So the pattern is for chunky yarn, which means that the rounds it tells you to do, just not, I didn't follow those at all. I literally just followed the pattern to start it and to work out the ratio of red and white rows to the blue so that it would look nice and even, which I think, I think it does. I think that looks pretty even. Um, but the way they did the star was a, a circle, which you then crocheted triangles onto. And I did it. Um, I did it in the size they recommended. Not the size they recommended, because they were doing it in chunky yarn. But I did it with the number of rounds they recommended as a test. And I really didn't like it. I just didn't think it was crisp enough, because obviously the Captain America shield is really, you know... I don't know what I was doing, geometric, angular, not floofy in any way. So I decided that the best thing to do would be to crochet a pentagon, which is what I did in the middle here. I crocheted a pentagon. I know the name for that because I had to look it up. Um, also, I knew the name for that because I feel like that's the highest I go when it comes to shape sides. <laughs> and then I crocheted triangles onto it. I think... Looking at it now, I do think that the triangles are probably a little more curvaceous than um, than I would like them. However, I think it looks really good and I'm really happy with the finished um, piece, with the fin with the faux. Um, so I'm okay with that. I think if I were to do it again, I would definitely experiment with making more angular triangles god what am i you can tell this is not my thing i'm not good at this but you know what i mean like more straight edged 
um, to give it a slightly more um, accurate, screen accurate look because a crocheted blanket is screen accurate. <laughs> oh golly, this is, this is the quality content that you tune in for. Um, but yeah, I'm super duper happy with this. I cannot wait to gift this. I haven't wrapped it up yet. I'm not sure if I should. Um, but I haven't even sent him a picture. I've sent pictures to some other friends who have thought it was great. I'm so excited because he doesn't even know that I started it. Um, he thought I was just going to do some stripes. So this, I think he is going to love. So there we go. That is a faux. And that is technically um, one Christmas gift down. Um, before I show you my next one, while we're on the subject of Christmas gifts, I'm going to grab my tea. Um, I will talk about coming up, which I usually do after I've talked about what I'm currently working on. But the year is 2020, so you know, what rules, frankly. Um, I am planning, as I said, my last Christmas present um, was due to come yesterday and I, I have to go and pick it up. Um, however, I do have some socks and some wristers to knit my nan for Christmas and I haven't started them. Um, and that's purely because of monogamy. I was working on the blanket and I just didn't have the headspace to work on something else. Um, I do have some yarn coming um, for the warm brew, I can never say it, warm brew wristers. It's just too much lip action there for me. Um, I have got socks yeah coming from Tribe Yarns in Richmond. So I'll be able to cast those on. I do have the yarn for the socks. I just need to um, figure out her numbers and I'm going to be honest with you I I might just tell her what I'm doing which kind of ruins the surprise but how am I going to get I just don't have any reason to measure her feet and work it out so I might just later on just be like I'm going to need some socks don't ask questions don't look at me just put your foot out <laughs> so at least then like the color will be a surprise and um I really do not have anything at the moment to work on um in meetings and I have two more weeks at work before we break for Christmas. So that's a lot of meetings and I could definitely get them done. And I definitely can get the wristers done because they're, they're wristers. So I'm not too worried about the deadline. I'm just, I need to start them. Um, because what I've been working on when I haven't been working on the blanket is my Kerry Town by Annie Lupton. Now this is knit out of Willow and Lark Ramble in the Oxblood colorway. And uh, regular viewers will know that I have been working on this for a while, but um, I kind of ripped it out and started it again a couple of weeks ago. So this is, you know, not, not too bad going. Um, as you can see this weird floppy stuff at the side. Oh my God, now I'm tangled. Oh, no. Lifelines. Um, the, uh, I'm putting them in every four rows. And um, for anyone who's watched previous episodes, you don't need me to tell you why I'm doing that. Because all I've done <laughs> the past few weeks is knit a little, rip a lot. Nip a little, rip a lot. Nip a little? Knit a little, rip a lot. Although it has felt look like I've been doing more nipping than anything else because I knit, I rip, I knit, I rip. Um, but um, the other day, I say the other day, last weekend, I gave myself a full duvet day. And I sat in bed and I watched um, both Taylor Swift documentaries, Miss Americana on Netflix and the folklore performance one on Disney Plus, which made me cry. So, fair warning. I cry at most things though. I cry at like guide dog adverts. Um, so, you know, your mileage may vary, but it made me cry. <laughs> and I got about, so I'd finished the first repeat. First repeat, done, nailed it. Uh, and I got about 20 stitches, 20 stitches, 20 rows into the second. And I kept laying it down and checking, checking the cable, checking the cable, checking the cable. And then I started putting in lifelines because somebody uh, wrote a comment to say you should be using lifelines. And I was like, I know I should be using lifelines. The problem is I forget and I don't remember until I've made a mistake um, and it's too late. So I happened to be speaking to a friend. I sent her a picture of the cable and I was like, oh, and while I send this to you, it's gonna remind me to put a lifeline in. So I'm gonna do that now. However, 
Later that day, I sat down to watch Strictly, as I want to do on a Saturday. And um, I laid it out on, on the pillow next to me, the cushion. And it was the first time I had laid the whole piece out. Up until then, I'd kind of just flattened out the centre cable because that's that's where you need to pay attention. That's that's where the mistakes are going to be, in the cable. So I'd been checking that, and it was only when I laid the whole thing out on a cushion that I realised, sort of here-ish, um, I had done... I guess these are called garter ridges, right? So I don't know if you can see, but down the sides, it's not, it's plain in that there's no cable, but it's not stockinette. It's like got these garter ridges. And I had done two. So instead of having stockinette, garter ridge, stockinette, garter ridge, I had done stockinette, garter ridge, garter ridge, stockinette, garter ridge, stockinette. <sighs> the feelings. I had a lot of feelings, let me tell you. So many feelings. Because I had nailed this and 20 rows before, probably, at, just hit myself in the face with a lifeline, but probably around the time that I started crying at Taylor Swift Folklore. Let's blame Taylor. Um, don't let's blame Taylor. I love that album. Um, I had made this epic screw up and just hadn't noticed because I had been putting all of my attention to the complicated bit. And so I had made a mistake the most glaring mistake in the easy bit. Like, I feel like there's a metaphor for life in there somehow, um, but I'm just not feeling quite mentally up to working out what it is. But there's depth there, bringing you that depth today. Um, and I was really, really angry about it. And I did try to drop down just that side and ladder up, but it was 20 rows and it was getting tangled and messy. And I was getting in a, um, a tiz was. So I just stopped and I put it down and I stepped away and I looked again and realised that I'd put in the first lifeline about nine st stitches, I always say stitches, nine rows above where the issue was. That's how little attention I was paying. I put a lifeline in and didn't clock it. So yeah, like learn from my mistakes there. So in the end, I dropped back and just re-knit I just ripped it all out because I also noticed that I hadn't, you know, there was some sloppiness in the braid cables as well. So I thought, you know what, let's just do it again. Do it again, not get caught up in what I'm watching. This is not get caught up knitting. This is be with your knitting knitting. And I re-knit it. And as you can see, I've been putting in a lifeline every four rows. So, and I lay it out every row and I check both sides and I check the cables and I check the middle and I lay it out and I check and it's slower going that way. It's not super slower going because it takes me, what, all of 10 seconds to do that. Um, but yeah, it's it's better. So there we go. I'm hoping to have the front done by Christmas. Um, I'm not hoping to have the whole jumper done by Christmas, potentially by the end of the year because I do have two weeks off over Christmas. I'm not planning to do a lot of socialising, um, more of that in it and natter. Um, but I will have time to finish it. So look, there we go. It's a beautiful jumper, or it will be one day. <laughs> now, before I go on to Knit and Natter, I do have a little bit of stash enhancement. Um, as I said, the um, Socks Yeah is on its way from Tribe Yarns. Um, I went for a sock yarn for the wristers because it's gonna be hard wearing. And um, I've never used Socks Yeah, and I, I want to try it, so two birds, one stone. So that is on its way. But I got a little treat sent to me. So I'm going to share it with you now. Now, for those of you who don't know, I used to work for Love Crafts, um, also known as Love Crochet and Love Knitting. Um, but I think they've gone over to just Love Crafts now. But anyway, I used to work there in 2017 or so. Um, and I went to Stitches West with them. It was great. I still have a lot of really good friends there. And they very, very kindly sent me some of their new Debbie Bliss yarn. Now, this is called Merian, and they sent me a shade card, and I have never had a shade card before, and I kind of wish that I did. Like, for certain yarns uh, that I use a lot, <clears throat> West Yorkshire Spinners, <laughs> it probably would do me the world of good to have a shade card, and this is such a beautiful, beautiful palette. I, you know I love me some yellow, I love this mustard, 
this green is gorgeous so we've got moss moss is beautiful gold is one of my favorites this mint the sky it's all beautiful it's a very nature inspired palette and it's absolutely lovely um so i'm going to tell you a little bit about it so let's have a look and you know i also like debbie bliss yarns i use them quite regularly for baby hats so that's super useful and like the mood board for it is absolutely gorgeous. I really love the kind of chunky cable knits. Um, they just look super cozy and delicious. And here are some of the patterns. In fact, I think this is the whole pattern collection. I particularly love this gray jumper and this cardigan because they look super easy to wear. Um, and as you may have noticed, I wore the same jumper two episodes in a row because it is locked down at the moment. Uh, it's not locked down, but we live in a pandemic currently and I don't leave my house that often. So I have a very small wardrobe and I just wear the same things over and over again. And this gray one is a very similar shape to the oatmeal jumper that I was wearing in the last couple of episodes. So I know that it's easy to wear. So I've got that in the back of my head. Um, I think they have got, yes, I'm gonna find that out for you. That's called Clara. So that's that there, that's called Clara. But they did send me two balls of the yarn, along with this hat pattern, which my nan has seen and has claimed. So either she will be knitting this hat with the yarn for herself, or I will be knitting this hat for her with this yarn. So there we go. I have two. The beautiful balls. Look at that. And this is, I think this is the mint. Yes, so this is the mint. And I wanna say this is pebble, but I might be wrong. Let's have a look. Oh no, mist. So it's the slightly paler gray. Oh, they are gorgeous. I think this would be the hat and that would be the pom-pom. They're not quite my colors. I think this is a little bit too pale for me. So this is definitely gonna be a hat for my Nan. I love this. It is um, 100 grams, chunky uh, weight yarn, and it's 50% wool and 50% acrylic. So I think if you are looking to make a garment, if you're fairly new um, to garment knitting, she says being fairly new herself, um, chunky might be a good way to go because it knits up a lot quicker. It's probably advice I should have taken myself. Um, what is it Alice in Wonderland says? I give myself very good advice, but I very seldom follow it. So yeah, I would recommend this. Um, it's very squishy, it's very bouncy. The only thing that might put me off is that it's got quite a halo. And I can be a bit funny about things with halo because I always worry that I'm gonna end up with bits in my sandwich. So if you are like me, maybe consider that. But that's it for things that I've made and finished over the past three weeks, three weeks. Um, so let's move on to Knit and Natter. Lockdown here in England has finished. We are now in tier two here in London. Um, I'm gonna be honest with you, I didn't really take advantage of going out um, when lockdown lifted. I had to work that evening. I then had a virtual event, my very first virtual event of this year to, well, that is that I haven't hosted. I mean, that I have attended. Um, I attended that on Thursday evening. So I didn't go out then. I did go to the gym though. I did go to the gym, which was absolutely marvelous and just felt like such a relief. Um, I had a lovely time, which sounds weird, but I did. Um, there is an element of me that feels a bit drab again. I've talked about this before about starting at day one, week one, but you know what? I'm just grateful to be able to get out. I'm grateful that there's a vaccine coming. So hopefully I can continue on getting uh, back to full fitness and hopefully not have to keep having the setback of the gym closing, um, which I'm not complaining about. If it has to happen, I completely understand it. It's just on a completely personal level. I'm like, oh, I like the gym. I wanna go to the gym. It's my happy place. It's not my happy place. Uh, is it? God, I think it might be. That's bad, isn't it? Like that's, <laughs> I don't consider myself a sporty person at all. Um, but I do think the gym is one of my happy places. What a revelation. I am gonna be really honest though and say, I don't know if there will be another podcast before Christmas or even before the end of the year. I am 
feeling pretty burnt out. And I know I'm not alone in that. I'm sure most of you watching this are nodding in fervent agreement. Um, I'm sure that we all feel done. <laughs> done feels like my word of December. I am so done. And even though we're not in lockdown anymore and I can see people um, outside, um, I'm going to keep my socialising to a very bare minimum. I am going to spread it out as much as possible because I need some rest. I am drained. I am emotionally, mentally, physically running on fumes at this point, to be perfectly honest. And it's not a good feeling. I am very glad that I had a day and a half off this week, so I was able to catch up on life admin. I'm very grateful that I can run out today and get all my gifts in the post, and then I have that mental release of as uh, one less thing to worry about. Um, and that sounds horrible because it makes it sound like I think it's a chore, and it's not because I, I really enjoyed sitting and writing my cards and wrapping them, but you know, getting them to the post office, queuing up to get in, masking up, it's a bit of a pain. But it's a necessary step in a process that I otherwise really enjoy. So it's a very short knit and natter this week because I want to keep this podcast nice and short because I am aware that I love podcasting. I love filming. Um, editing? Less so. <laughs> so I'm trying to give myself minimal edit time and maximum knit time, frankly, because I don't know if I mentioned it, but I've got some Christmas things I need to knit. So... I just wanted to let you know that I'm okay. I'm just running slightly on empty and I may or may not be back before Christmas. I was really hoping to do Vlogmas this year, but between, but between lockdown, uh, the ceiling falling down, the washing machine packing up, generally feeling fairly depleted, I decided that this was not the year to put anything else on my plate. So hopefully, I really wanna do Vlogmas one year. Um, it's just such a busy time. It's just making the headspace for it. So hopefully next year. Um, but yeah, I just thought I'd check in and say, I'm okay, but I am listening to my body and my mind, which is saying, rest, Nikki, please, please. Which is why I had a duvet day last weekend. And um, I'm gonna sign off now because I, I am just blathering at you at this point. But I, I'm sure I'm not the only one who feels that way. And if you are able to, where possible, please, please, please rest. Obviously, you know, um, we all have different commitments. For example, I've still got two more weeks um, of work, 10 days, 10 more working days. Um, and I can't really walk out on that. <laughs> I mean, I could, but I don't think they pay me. Um, but if you are a carer, if you're a parent, if you're in a protected uh, key worker position, I do completely understand that you have commitments. Let's all just give each other some grace. Let's give each other some love and the space to rest. Hopefully the good news um, with the vaccines, etc., will continue to come and we will hopefully um, have a much stronger 2021. And um, if I don't see you before, I really hope I do, but if I don't see you before, have a very, very Merry Christmas. If you do not celebrate Christmas, have a happy Hanukkah, have a happy Winterval period, have a happy Festimus, <laughs> and a happy new year. And I will see you as soon as I can, rested, more energetic. No, I was gonna say more able to tell, maths accurately tell maths accurately I told you i needed rest i will see you very soon for another cup of tea take care